right now it is time to talk about Evergreen with Gail, Gail and Charlton. So I will turn over the floor. Okay, um, hello, and thank you for joining me as I uh, talk uh, about um, some updates I've made uh, to the Evergreen iOS driver for Viewfind. My name is Galen Charlton, and I am implementation and IT manager at the Equ Equinox Open Library Initiative, a US nonprofit organization that supports open source software for libraries. This presentation will tell the story of how I updated the Evergreen iOS driver and what I learned along the way. While I will try to keep an eye on chat, I will plan on taking questions at the, the end of uh, my presentation. So um, first to establish uh, some background, what is Evergreen? Evergreen is an open source integrated library system that was originally developed for the Georgia Public Library Services, Public Library Consortium, Pines. Pines currently serves about 300 libraries in the state of uh, Georgia. And back in 2004, the Evergreen project was started with the design goal of natively supporting the needs of library consortia. It had its 1.0 release in 2006. And since then, Evergreen has grown to encompass several large consortia in the United States and Canada, along with a presence outside the US, uh, including in the Czech Republic. While Evergreen's roots are in serving public library consortia, it has also been adopted by non-consortial public libraries, as well as academic libraries. And Evergreen had its release of version uh, 3.8.0 just a few days ago. Evergreen is, I would argue, without parallel for managing the sharing of physical resources among members of a consortium. Of course, libraries have many more electronic resources to manage than they did in 2004, and Viewfind's ability to index and provide access to electronic holdings from a variety of uh, databases is a great complement to what Evergreen offers. Consequently, my employer, the Equinox Open Library Initiative, has uh, started exploring Viewfind and how we might uh, use it to serve our client libraries uh, alongside our services for Evergreen, COA, Coral, and Subjects Plus. So why me in a particular? Um, I've been involved in library automation for over 20 years, um, but in the past 15 or so, uh, particularly in open source, uh, primarily dealing with Koha and Evergreen. I've been an Evergreen project committer since 2010, and in the 11 years since so then, have learned a thing or two about Evergreen. Consequently, when I started evaluating Viewfind and its Evergreen iOS driver, I felt pretty comfortable with uh, the Evergreen side of uh, things. Um, the Viewfind uh, you know, side, of course, was a new experience. So before I go on, first uh, an acknowledgement. The quote in the title of uh, this uh, slide comes from a letter that Isaac Newton wrote to Robert Hulk in 1675. It is followed by a sentence more commonly recognized. If I've seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. In the same spirit, I want to acknowledge uh, the work uh, that many others have done on the Evergreen Driver, including that done by Warren Layton, the original author, as well as Dan Scott and Wesley Custer, who I recognize as Evergreen users. But I also want to acknowledge the maintenance work uh, done by many others, uh, each commit updating the driver to reflect changes in API signatures, style guidelines, or internal conventions, you know, made by people who are not necessarily using Evergreen has helped to keep uh, things uh, fresh. But yet entropy comes uh, for us all. Um, as soon as I can tell, Warren Layton contributed the Evergreen iOS driver in 2008, uh, around the time that Evergreen 1.4 was released. Since uh, then, both Viewfind and Evergreen have evolved, uh, though I must say that the Viewfind iOS driver interface has been remarkably stable over these years. On the Evergreen side, while most of the core ideas that Warren implemented remain the same, Evergreen has had several changes that resulted in the iOS driver getting increasingly out of date. 
the biggest change as far as the driver is concerned was that in 2016, when Evergreen uh, changed its password hashing uh, algorithm from MD5 uh, to one based on a Bcrypt. Because of that change, when I started looking at the driver, patron authentication simply didn't work. It also quickly became apparent that the driver was returning Evergreen item record IDs in several places where ViewFind was expecting title or bib IDs. Finds and hold request uh, displays were also problematic. To summarize, if you took a stock Evergreen system and a stock ViewFind system, you could set it up to index records from Evergreen and, real, and retrieve real-time item status. But that was it. Uh, the Evergreen driver's uh, support for ViewFinds, my research uh, or user account features uh, simply didn't uh, work. So in addition to fixing things, uh, there were other improvements uh, that I, I identified. Um, there were newer options that the ViewFind iOS interface uh, afforded in how it displayed uh, current loans retrieved uh, from the iOS. And I also found an opportunity to improve how ViewFind displayed the dates coming from Evergreen by hooking into ViewFind's built-in date and time formatters. Evergreen, as a consortial iOS, makes a distinction between the Lari location that owns an item and the one that happens to circulate it. And I was able to add that uh, to the get uh, my transactions response. Similarly, there is more that I could forward uh, into the user profile response. So let's um, see some results. Um, I should mention that what I'm about to show you is made up data adapted uh, from Evergreen's test data set. No real patron data is uh, being shown uh, today. So the user profile, once we got past the authentication hurdle, was already mostly complete, um, but um, I did add the city, country, and the patron's uh, privilege uh, expiration uh, date. Um, the list of checked out items, on the other hand, had a major problem. The driver was returning the evergreen record ID, uh, but ViewFind wants the title or bib record ID. I'm not sure why the driver did this originally. All I can speculate is that maybe it was expecting a model where ViewFind would have ingested a title record for each item record in Evergreen. Or maybe back in 2008, uh, the driver had the different expectations of what the return uh, ID would be. In any event, I didn't feel bound to that. So I changed uh, the underlying query to return the Evergreen bib ID. I also made changes to ensure that the loan status of due in the next 24 hour or overdue uh, was reflected. And since Evergreen supports hourly loans, I also ensured that the due date string handed back to ViewFind would conditionally show the time component if uh, the loan was hourly. Or technically speaking, if the loan duration was any interval not measured in units of whole days. This is because if you want Evergreen to have a loan period of seven minutes, you can do that. Though I would not recommend inflicting that on your patrons. Similarly, Get My Holds was returning the item ID, not the title ID. After fixing that, I also made changes to pass the frozen or thawed status of a hold request back to ViewFind, as well as its pickup shelf status. And as far as the finds interface was concerned, the Evergreen iOS driver clearly started off as an early and clear fan of the no finds movement. Well, sadly, while many libraries do charge overdue finds, almost all libraries do charge for lost items and photocopier fees and the like. Consequently, I corrected the get my finds method to correctly return data for both loan related and non-loan related uh, in Evergreen parlance, grocery, fines uh, and fees. So where are we at now? Uh, I think 
we've made a good first uh, step. Viewfind is now ready to be plausibly, plausibly put in front of an evergreen system and provide both bibliographic access and a patron account uh, and a transaction access. Of course, there's still uh, a lot uh, that uh, could be done. Um, adding a bit more protection against SQL injection attacks. Um, there are some queries uh, that are uh, still not using bind variables. Teaching viewfind how to direct their patrons if they want to place holds uh, or renew items. Adding some more documentation to the wiki. Um, I've worked out um, the uh, configuration changes you need uh, to correctly index uh, mark records coming from Evergreen uh, and map Evergreen's uh, location so correctly. Uh, I just need to write it up. Um, and a couple of years ago, Evergreen recently added a course uh, reserves module. Um, so, you know, adding the corresponding course retrieval methods uh, to the driver uh, would be possible. However, the current driver is not really going to be a particular focus of mine, although I'm happy to fix the bugs and I will be keeping an eye out for bug reports. Let me show you some of the changes I made to the existing driver, which will help explain why a new direction is needed. So of course, we're talking about code. So there has to be at least one slide uh, that shows a uh, code. Um, here it is. Um, this is in particular a part of the change I made uh, to uh, get my transactions. This is updating an SQL query to fetch uh, data about the patron's current loans from Evergreen. And that points to the problem with the current approach. Namely, Everything is being done via a direct database connection. Now, SQL uh, queries are perfectly fine. Evergreen uses a standard relational database manager, Postgres, and is meant to be queried. But the direct database connections are also risky. If you configure one, you're putting a lot of trust in the client and at the network. Now, if you're hosting Viewfind and Evergreen on the same server or the same LAN, you can, of course, uh, control both ends and the transport. However, sometimes you don't uh, control both ends. Since one of Equinox's uh, services is software hosting, dealing with direct database connections over the internet is a situation we sometimes uh, find ourselves in. And we hate it. Well, that's too strong of a statement, but a wrong database uh, connection is a data security and patron privacy risk. Furthermore, some of the potential features of Viewfind would change a state on behalf of the patron, placing hold requests, renewing loans, and so forth. Now, could I successfully implement a routine to correctly pay, place a hold request in Evergreen uh, by direct database inserts and updates? Yes. Like I said, I've learned a thing or two from my decade working on Evergreen. But do I want to? Should I? Would such a routine stay correct? Absolutely not. Um, also, uh, and this is where um, our experience with library consortia informs the things. Evergreen helps uh, bring libraries together to share their materials, but that doesn't necessarily mean that all of the members of a consortium necessarily want the same discovery interface. Consequently, it's important to be able to cleanly offer access to just a subset of an evergreen system. Now, there are some mitigations that would help with uh, securing a direct um, a database connection. These include ensuring that the database connection is encrypted, which you know, Postgres can both uh, support uh, and mandate uh, TOS uh, connections. Um, it's also possible to have you find use a limited uh, database account that's read only and has access to only the minimum uh, set of tables and columns it needs. And with a bit more effort, it's also possible to make uh, the database enforce limited access to just uh, the rows belonging to a given library. 
So this will be more fodder uh, for stuff that I'll write up on the viewfind wiki. But the mitigations still don't get us a way to change a state on behalf of a patron. So consequently, my plan is to start work on a new Evergreen iOS driver that will use Evergreen's APIs. You know, this will remove the need for a direct database connection and thus ensure that database, that data access respects Evergreen's permission structure, both from the point of view using viewfind uh, as well as the library or libraries providing to act, uh, providing the access uh, from evergreen to viewfind along the way um, there will be a couple benefits to the evergreen project um, it will give us a reason to help test a patch uh, for evergreen that's been languishing uh, for a while uh, that patch uh, would uh, allow evergreen to act as an OAI PMH a provider. And if it works out, uh, it might be better than relying on uh, custom export scripts uh, to help uh, keep a viewfind system uh, up to date uh, as uh, catalog data gets uh, up updated uh, in Evergreen. I'm also expecting uh, another side benefit for Evergreen. Evergreen's web APIs um, pre predate the development uh, of a lot of standard expectations, i.e. that you would uh, get responses in JSON, uh, that data structures would be self-describing, and so forth. So I'm figuring that um, a good PHP client um, that uses Evergreen's API would go a long way to help it make it easier for others uh, to do integrations uh, with Evergreen. Um, But I'm hoping that uh, over time, um, there might be some uh, knowledge uh, exchange and ideas coming from uh, the other direction as well. So, you know, at Equinox, we're exploring Viewfind and Evergreen uh, together for a reason. Viewfind search capabilities and ability to fold in non-IOS uh, content would be a great complement to Evergreen. Um, but maybe there are a, a few things uh, that you find as a piece of software might learn uh, from Evergreen. So for example, Evergreen not only lets you place title and item hold requests, but lets you place holds uh, at the volume level and uh, the meta record level, uh, more on meta records uh, shortly. It also lets you place holds on the work and specify the formats that you would be interested in receiving without having to uh, select a particular title record. Um, if we make the Evergreen API driver um, be able to relay such a request, um, that would also mean uh, extending viewfind uh, to teach it the ability to pass along record formats um, along with a hold request. Similarly, Evergreen has a concept of meta records that group uh, together titles based on uh, calculated work uh, keys. It's a bit like uh, Viewfind's uh, record versions. Uh, and I did notice uh, that uh, there's uh, another presentation later during the uh, summit about this. Um, but one of the things about Evergreen's meta records is that they both support searching um, on uh, works. Uh, as well as placing hold the requests at the meta record level. Uh, another area we're interested in are fine payments. In the short term, that probably means bouncing uh, the patron over to the Evergreen fine payments page, but it might be interesting to explore adding payment gateway support uh, to view find. Uh, another uh, notion, uh, Evergreen also uh, includes various me measures of popularity, such as weighted circulation counts that can be used uh, to adjust uh, relevance ranking and sorting. It's not a particularly widely used feature uh, in Evergreen, um, but maybe uh, there are some ideas uh, that would be worth exploring uh, for viewfind. Um, so, what was it like taking a reasonably sized uh, unit of work in a new to me code base? Pretty good, actually. 
uh, I found that the iOS driver documentation was thorough. Uh, that I'm also proud to say that I was able to spot uh, a minor glitch uh, and get it fixed. Um, the feedback uh, was just about instantaneous. I'd like to specifically call out and thank uh, Demian Katz uh, for his uh, responsiveness. The continuation, continuous integration uh, was easy to deal with, and I was able to find just about all the information I needed, uh, both uh, to do at the work uh, and uh, to start figuring uh, start figuring out um, where to communicate uh, with uh, other viewfind uh, people. Oh, and installation of viewfind was pretty straightforward, um, though it does help that I've been working as a coder for quite a while. One thing I will mention, by the way, is that I ended up using Union FS Fuse to set up a layered uh, file system so that I could work on a Git clone at the bottom while letting things such as logs and solder indexes live on the upper half, leaving the Git uh, repo nice and clean. And that's in general something I'm uh, curious about, uh, about how others uh, set up uh, their development environments. So suppose you're running Evergreen now and want to try Viewfind. My changes are in the dev uh, Git branch. Thanks again, Nadamian, uh, for the quick merge, and will be part of Viewfind by. However, they should be readily backportable to Viewfind 7.1 and 8 if uh, you're you know, uh, basing your installation on that. And I suspect that they could be backported to earlier versions of Viewfind without too much fuss. Though, though I think um, Viewfind version 5.1 represents uh, a cutoff uh, point uh, where more effort uh, would be needed. However, you know, I'm not making any uh, guarantees. Um, Mark export uh, into Viewfind uh, from uh, an Evergreen export is very straightforward, um, but it's also something where I'll be writing up uh, some instructions uh, for the wiki. So. What's in the future? Well, it's been a pleasure working to improve uh, the Evergreen driver for Viewfind um, and uh, to um, you know, you know, uh, start planning uh, for uh, the next uh, iteration of the driver. And you know, we're hoping uh, to help establish uh, some more libraries that are using both Viewfind and Evergreen. Uh, I'm aware of at least one production uh, instance of the combination. There may be others, uh, but you know, I don't uh, believe uh, that there are a ton of them. But also as a member of uh, the Evergreen project, I'd like to extend an invitation uh, to um, folks uh, here working on Viewfind. Please join us at the next uh, online Evergreen conference in 2022. Um, I'll share details as uh, they uh, become uh, available. So thank you for your time and attention. As I'm literally incapable of building a slide deck uh, that does not include pictures of my cats, please enjoy this one of my orange uh, tabby George cuddling up uh, to Lucifer. Um, so at this point, if you have any questions or uh, feedback uh, for me, um, please uh, go ahead. Excellent. Thank you so much. I'm not seeing any questions at the moment, but if we give everyone a minute, we do have a few minutes until the next uh, scheduled talk. So uh, give everyone a minute to formulate their thoughts. Maybe we can get a few questions in here. And I will echo the, the thanks for, for both the work on fixing and improving the driver and all of the useful feedback. And I definitely will follow up with you about some of your suggestions, uh, as I think there's definitely uh, some more collaboration that we can do. Great, I'm glad to hear it. All right, so I see a question in chat. Uh, are we uh, planning iOS DI or REST API as uh, the next uh, step uh, for connectivity? Um, and that's uh, an interesting question um, because this actually speaks uh, to an area where Evergreen uh, could be improved. Um, so 
Evergreen does have a web API. Um, it's not particularly restful. Um, and like I mentioned, um, it's uh, not, um, you know, it predates uh, some of uh, the common uh, conventions. Um, you know, uh, an iOS ODI is not uh, something that the Evergreen project uh, has particularly looked at. But that said, um, we do know that a RESTful API would be a good addition to Evergreen. And um, there are some, um, you know, there is uh, some work underway to start bolting that onto Evergreen, uh, but at the moment uh, uh, without, uh, not uh, with a firm uh, time frame. So for the next uh, iteration of the, uh, the iOS driver, I'm anticipating that, you know, will um, just be dealing with the Evergreen API as is. Uh, and uh, like I said, hopefully by doing so help uh, make the barrier to entry of other people wanting to interact with Evergreen programmatically uh, just a little, a little bit lower. All right, so uh, another question. With a direct uh, database connection, would it be possible to integrate uh, multiple Evergreen instances? Um, I think that the answer um, might be yes, uh, but uh, I think this is uh, one uh, where folks more familiar with the uh, viewfind might, might uh, be able to uh, say a bit more definitively. But my understanding is that the multi iOS uh, driver um, would be uh, an approach to do that. Um, I think it would be necessary to do some work uh, to uh, manipulate record IDs um, so that um, they don't overlap. Yes, I, I would agree with that assessment as long as there's no technical limitation on how many Postgres database connections PHP can handle at once. And I don't see why there would be. Uh, I think multi-ILS would do the job. Okay, great, thank you.